Hi there. So over the last couple of weeks, I've noticed a few questions that have been posted on some of the Power BI discussion boards about the best use cases for the bookmarking feature in Power BI and some questions around how some of the bookmark features work in and of itself. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'll, I'm going to go through the trigger actions that are new in the April update to Power BI, go through some of the properties in those trigger actions, and then take you through some of the Power BI bookmarking features that are available. I'm calling this sort of demystifying the way that the bookmarking features work. So if you're more interested in the bookmarking content, there's a link in the description to the video to go directly to that part of the video. If you want to dive deep into the trigger actions and how the trigger buttons work, then stick with me here and we'll go through that now. So uh, the, the trigger actions are basically just a menu item on the insert menu. There's a buttons item that you click and it's, it's basically just coming with prepackaged visuals as part of the way that the bookmarks will work. So you know, your typical things like a left and right arrow, a reset button, back button information button, all that kind of stuff. And I've pre-built uh, a few of these out here. So I started with a blank button uh, that's what I used for bookmarks on each year. So I'm just going to click one of these and take you through some of the properties that are available within the visualization here. So on the visualizations menu, you'll get uh, a button text that you can fill out. That's what I've used here and just put in a placeholder for each year. Uh, you can color the text, align it, change the size, all the typical stuff that you want. And then there's a drop down menu on each uh, on each item here that lets you choose what behavior you want you want to have happen or what you want to be displayed when they hover over an item or when they select it. So I'm going to show you what that looks like on some of the background information when we get there. I can change the icon so I chose a button that's blank but if I had chosen a different button I would have received uh, the default setting for that particular button in here so I can change it at this point if I want to to a different icon and again the same context is available to me I can change what icon is displayed by clicking hover or select and then choosing what type of icon I want to want to see more control over the color and transparency all of those items are on there as well I have the ability to change the outline uh, of the box. So in this case, I have the outline set to this light orange color. If I wanted on hover over for it to change to a different color, I could set that here, but I've left it the same uh, for on hover and select. It's the same value. Where some of it will change for me in this example is in the fill menu. So by default, it's filled with just white. It's set at 50% transparency, but you'll notice if I change to hover over, it's this light orange color. And I can demo that here for you. If I hover over it, it's light orange. On the selected option, if I click on it, you'll notice it turns gray. So anytime I click it, it's going to turn gray, and that's the color that I've selected in the fill there as well. I could set a title. Uh, this is available in a lot of the visualiz visualizations already, a different background, borders if I want to. And then the action part of it, the trigger action, is uh, what I actually want the button to do when I've selected or when I've clicked on it. And that's on here by default since it's a trigger action. I am going to choose to activate a bookmark. I could also have it go back to the previous layer if I'm doing a drill through. And then there's new functionality for April for Q&A that I'm not going to cover here. I'm going to cover in a separate video. All right, and then I've got, since this is tied to a bookmark, I've created a bookmark called 2011 that it's going to activate if I click on that particular button. All right, so that's the that's the features of the bookmarks and the trigger actions. It's, it's basically just a really quick way for you to be able to build bookmarks from the menu and set up the context of how you want that bookmark to work rather quickly, rather than having to import your own image and own backgrounds and fill and all of that kind of stuff uh, outside of having the trigger actions. So let's go through demystifying the bookmarks here. So I'm gonna start with this information uh, bookmark and trigger action. So I just went to the buttons menu and chose information and dropped one on here. I'm going to select it and then we're going to go to the view menu and choose the bookmarks pane so you can see that the way the bookmarks are are laid out. 
And what I've got selected inside this particular bookmark is to uh, do the display and the current page, but not to change any of the data. So what you'll see here is when I click the bookmark and I'm holding down my control key so I can click on the canvas and show you that this information bookmark just displays, pulls up a text box that displays information about the report itself or the dashboard here. And uh, I can click it again and it'll hide it. What it's because I don't have this data uh, selected here, it's not going to make any changes to the underlying filters that are in this report. So if I if I selected 2011 and ran the bookmark, it doesn't change any of the way the filters work. However, if I go in and I change the data to be check as a check mark next to it, it's going to change the data to whatever the filter was when I created the bookmark or the last time I updated it. So if I go back to all years and then click on my information button, you'll see it went back to 2011. All right, so let's do it again. All years, I click information and you'll see it goes back to 2011 because that's what was selected when I created the bookmark and updated it. All right, so to undo that, we're just gonna uncheck data and not have that information change when I run the bookmark, okay? So there's a use case there for how, how that's supposed to work. Now, I'm gonna stick with this bookmark, uh, so this bookmark uh, for the information box, and we're going to see how display works, okay? So right now when I click it, of course I get the text box, that's nice. If I were to uncheck display here, it's going to make the bookmark non-functional. And the reason it's doing that is because the display option is since it's not checked it's telling power bi don't change any of the displays or the selections uh, that were saved when the bookmark was created or updated and i can see that in the selection pane where there's uh where there's the eyeball there it tells you whether it's visible or not and i'm telling power bi don't change any of that when it's clicked and that's why it's non-functional right now so again to get it back i want the display to change that's the purpose of this particular button so now that that's available, if I click on it, it'll come back again. So again, another use case there on how the functionality would work with disabling the display on the screen. All right, let's dig into the last component here, and that's uh, functionality on the current page. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I've got uh, 2011 data, and I also have a 2012 year, and you'll see that the current page for 2012 is not checked. So what that means is when I, whenever I run the 2012 bookmark, if I have it attached to a button, it's not going to change the page that I'm currently on to the page where the bookmark was created when I do it. So let's go ahead and, and do a quick demo of this. What I've got built behind the scenes here is I have uh, some sync slicers in place. So I'll, I'll activate that and show, show that to you here. Uh, on the order date, it's synced to this details page over here, okay? And so both of these, the order date on both pages are synced, all right? Notice that this says uh, 2012 to 2014. It's the complete data set that I have for AdventureWorks. If I were to change this to 2011, so January to December of 2011, you'll notice that that change took place over here as well. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset it back to all years, and then we'll go to the details page. And uh, if I were to run that bookmark here, so I have the bookmark on this page, I'm gonna click it, you'll notice it changed the year just to 2012, but it didn't navigate me back to the original page on which it was created to the summary page. That's different than if I'm gonna go back and do all years again, and we'll go to the detail page. This time I'm gonna click the 2011 bookmark, and you'll see it took me back to the summary page. So the use case for this, in, in my view of the best way to use it is, let's say I have a bookmark like 2012 that I want to use across multiple pages, but I don't want to navigate back to the original page on which it was created. I just wanna have that bookmark shared across several different slicers, of course, with the same field that it's slicing on. This would be a good use case for that particular feature of the bookmark. Okay, again, that's the uh, current page selection. So previously I've seen people create a 2011A, a 2011B, and C for all the different pages. They really only need to create that one time as long as they're slicing on the same date field across those pages. 
All right, the last piece then is another feature. It's below the section where data display and current display is. It's the all visuals and selected visuals option. All right, so in 2011, what I have is uh, I have selected visuals checked where on 2012, I have all visuals checked. And intuitively, that means exactly what it sounds like. When 2012 is clicked, uh, either as the button or here as the sample bookmark uh, for demonstration purposes, it's going to impact all of the visuals on the page. For 2011, it's only going to impact the visuals that were selected at the time the bookmark was created or when it was updated. So let me demo what that looks like. So I'm gonna go back to all years and you'll notice that all products is currently selected and I'm gonna change uh, all color products to, let's do uh, NA for example, so it doesn't have a color, or the, pro the color's not applicable. If I change to 2012, and 2012 has all visuals, you'll see that it changes even the default view of that particular visual uh, from a just a drop down to a list. So it even changed the layout and it defaulted to all of them. None are selected, so that's all of them. If I go back and I choose NA again, the not applicable group, and I go to 2011, this is where only selected visuals is checked, and I, I click that particular year, you'll notice that it stays at the NA product color selection. It didn't change that one at all. And that's because I didn't have that visual selected when I created the bookmark. Now, I will tell you that there's, as of me, as of the time me recording this video and the April update, I did notice a slight issue with the way this functionality worked. It doesn't tell you on the selection pane here when you select a bookmark what was selected at the time the bookmark was created or updated. So for me right now, what I had to do to make this work was to remove the bookmark and add it back in and make sure I selected only the visuals that I wanted selected. So I wouldn't want to select both order date and the product color slicer. I would want to deselect that one and then create the, create the uh, bookmark again. And then when I select just selected visuals, it will only update this visual with the bookmarked time and it won't change the color slicer at all. All right, that's it for this video. I'm going to leave it there. Please post comments, questions, uh, give me a like. That's always useful. And subscribe to this channel for future updates. Thank you.